In 2019, Shell, one of the largest oil companies in the world, announced a new campaign in Europe. For just one cent, customers could offset all of the emissions from their fuel. According to the company's ads and billboards, it was now possible to drive carbon neutral. There was just one small problem with the campaign. That extra cent that Shell charged their customers didn't actually do anything to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere. One of the offset projects that Shell featured prominently in their campaign was Corderia Azul in Peru. According to the company's marketing materials, these forests would be logged if it weren't for Shell's support. And that claim was the basis of the entire drive carbon neutral concept. Sure, the gasoline that Shell sold would eventually end up as CO2 in the atmosphere, but it would be offset or compensated for by a reduction in emissions from deforestation. To show customers what an impact they were making, they even made a virtual reality video where customers could tour the forest that they were helping protect. We're now giving customers the option to drive carbon neutral with Shell fuels. I know this because I spent $10 to buy some goofy VR goggles to see it for myself. But what Shell fails to mention is the fact that this forest was already a national park protected by Peru's government. According to one park official, there hadn't been any illegal logging for years before the offset project got started. And that means that the project failed one of the most important measures of a carbon offset's value, additionality. In other words, the offsets didn't do anything to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere. And this project in Peru wasn't a rare outlier either. When journalists at the publication Unearth looked into Shell's campaign further, they found two more projects that provided no additionality, one in Indonesia and one in Scotland. Of course, Shell isn't the only company that's using offsets to greenwash. And the projects I mentioned aren't the only bad ones. But before getting into more examples, let's talk about why all this matters in the first place. Net zero. Net zero. Because Apple is going carbon neutral. In the last few years, many of the world's largest corporations have committed to going net zero by 2050. And at first, these announcements seem like great news, evidence that the world's largest corporations are finally taking climate change seriously. But dig into these companies' plans to get to net zero, and you'll notice something alarming. Virtually all of them are planning to use huge amounts of offsets to get there. Now, companies like Shell say that they plan to avoid, reduce, and then mitigate their emissions. In other words, they'll use offsets only as a last resort for the emissions that they can't cut. But based on Shell's recent actions, this clearly isn't true. Earlier this year, Shell announced that they would slow their investments in renewable energy and invest more aggressively in natural gas. The company appears to be making no real effort to reduce their emissions. If anything, they're actively increasing them. According to one investigation, at the same time that they were running their drive carbon neutral campaign, Shell was giving $10 million per year to the biggest anti-electric vehicle lobbying group. It's honestly difficult to find a better example of greenwashing than Shell's current offset strategy. And yet Shell isn't the only major corporation doing this. We believe that you shouldn't have to choose between seeing the world and saving it. That's why Delta is pursuing fleet renewal, sustainable aviation fuels, operational initiatives, and emerging technologies. This is our flight to net zero. In 2020, Delta Airlines announced that they would go net zero by 2050. With all the talk about how bad flying is for the environment, Delta wanted people to think that their flights were different, a guilt-free way to see the world. One of the places that they advertised their net zero claim was on their in-flight napkins. I know this because for some weird reason, these napkins are for sale on eBay. But the claim on their napkins and in their initial announcement were a bit confusing. On the napkin, Delta said that they were carbon neutral since 2020. But in their press announcement, they said that they were planning to be net zero by 2050. And that's weird because you can't be both carbon neutral today and on the path to being carbon neutral in 2050. But this is to be expected since weird napkins are sort of Delta's thing. Atlanta-based Delta Airlines and Coca-Cola are apologizing for a gimmick that seemed to encourage passengers to to flirt with each other. A message on napkins read, because you're on a plane full of interesting people, and hey, you never know. Now on the other side of the napkin, a place to write down your number and give it to your plane crush. <laughs> and lest you think that these were the only two examples, here's another Delta napkin that reads somewhat ominously, no one will miss you. But who cares if Delta has some weird napkins? The bigger problem is that the entire premise of their net zero claim is based on a lie. In 2021, Delta emitted 26 million tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. According to their own accounting, they spent $65 million to buy offsets to wipe out all those emissions. This made Delta one of the largest buyers of offsets that year, just ahead of Shell. Now, I really wish that this was an effective way to reach net zero. Because if it was, then solving climate change would be really cheap and easy. 
A little math tells us that Delta spent just over $2 per ton to offset their emissions. And at that price, we could eliminate the entire world's emissions for just over $100 billion per year. But just like you get what you pay for on Delta's flights, you get what you pay for when you're buying carbon offsets. One of the projects that Delta supported was the Los Cocos Wind Farm in the Dominican Republic. The idea of a renewable energy offset like this is that by supporting a wind farm, Delta could help cut emissions from a fossil fuel power plant nearby. So while a flight pumps a bunch of CO2 into the atmosphere, the offset, well, offsets that pollution. But again, the question that we have to ask is if Delta's offsets pass the additionality test. Otherwise, their money isn't doing anything but making that wind farm more profitable. When journalists at Bloomberg looked into the Los Cocos project, they discovered that the wind farm was gonna be built regardless of whether it got any offset revenue. So while Delta's flights put all that CO2 into the atmosphere, the Los Cocos project didn't do anything to offset it. And it turns out that this is actually pretty common in the offset market. In 2021, General Electric bought 1.5 million offsets. Half of those were from a wind farm in China. But an investigation later found that that wind farm didn't need any financial support. It was gonna be built regardless. Now, none of this would be a problem if renewable energy offsets weren't that common, or if the projects I mentioned were rare outliers. But renewable offsets are the second most common type of offset sold. In 2021, 40% of all offsets were these types of projects. And many of the world's largest companies are using them as a part of their net zero strategy. The problem is that today, very few of these projects are doing any good. Over the last decade, the cost of renewables has fallen dramatically. In most places today, it's now cheaper to build wind and solar than fossil fuel power plants. And that means that a company like Delta throwing a few bucks at a project doesn't really do anything. Recently, researchers looked at about 500 wind projects in India, one of the largest offset markets in the world. They concluded that 52% of all of the projects would have been built with or without the offset revenue. And if the polluters that bought these offsets used them to justify more pollution, then they would have added 28 million tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. To put that in perspective, that's like running a coal power plant for five years. When companies like Shell and Delta are criticized for using bad offsets, they typically defend themselves by saying that they were verified by an independent third party. But the problem with this is that many of the largest third party verifiers are overestimating the benefits of their offsets. Recently, a group of journalists and academics investigated Vera, the largest offset certifier in the world. And 90% of the offsets that they looked at provided no benefit at all. Now, none of this is to say that carbon offsets can't work or that they won't play at least some small role in decarbonization. Some nature-based offsets are really good. And there's an increasing number of legitimate ways to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. But in order to avoid a climate disaster, we need these companies to do more than buy even the highest quality carbon offsets. We need them to dramatically reduce their emissions. And we'd be fools to think that they're gonna do it voluntarily.